Hey there. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at some of the factors that affect infiltration. So you should recognize this as a diagram of the water cycle, and there are a lot of things labeled on here. We looked at how when precipitation falls from the sky and it lands on the earth, there are two things that mainly happen to it. Some of that water will seep underground, so that's called infiltration. Some of it will stay above ground and will run off on top of the land, so that's called runoff. Okay? As you watch the video, keep in mind that precipitation can only do one of those two things at a time. Either it's infiltrating into the ground or it's not. It's staying above ground as runoff. So if one happens, the other does not happen. Okay, keep that in mind. So what you'll notice is in this picture on the left, the rain is falling at a rate of 0.75 inches per hour. It's infiltrating at the same rate. So if it falls, and goes into the ground at the same rate, you're going to have very little runoff. If, however, the rain falls at a rate that's higher than the infiltration rate, we're going to get more runoff because the rain is falling faster than it's able to get into the ground. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go through the rest of this video. So the first factor Stop. Hey there. So today in this video, we're going to take a quick look at some of the factors that affect infiltration. So in class, we had looked at the water cycle. We went over the different steps and we looked at how when precipitation falls from the sky, there are mainly two things that can happen to it. Some of the precipitation will seep into the ground and that is called infiltration. Some of the precipitation doesn't seep into the ground. Instead, it stays on top of the land and it runs off the surface, which we call runoff. Keep in mind through this video that precipitation can only do one of those two things at a time. If the precipitation is infiltrating, then it's not becoming runoff. And if it's becoming runoff, then it's not infiltrating. Okay, so if one goes up, the other will go down meaning there's going to be an indirect relationship between them. So let's take a look at a couple of the factors that affect the speed at which water can infiltrate. So the first factor is the slope of the land. So we have two different landscapes. We have a mountainous region here with very steep slopes. And we have more of a plain or rolling hills region over here on the right. So let's say it were to rain in both areas. Those are raindrops landing on the ground. When the rain hits the land, on which landscape would it travel faster? Okay, well, let's think about this. If you were to ride a bike on each of these landscapes, where would you go faster? Yeah, you're going to go faster down the mountain because it's much steeper. So when the rain hits the ground, gravity is going to pull it very, very quickly down the slope of the mountain. Whereas in this image, because it's less steep, the water will still get pulled by gravity, but it's going to get pulled slower. Well, here's the thing. If you were to pour a cup of water onto soil, does the water immediately go into the soil? No, it takes a little bit of time for the water to infiltrate. So here's how this factor works. Water needs time to infiltrate. If the water moves too quickly, it does not have the time that it needs to get into the ground. So the steeper the slope, the less water will get into the ground because it's moving too quickly. So it's going to run off. So steeper areas have more runoff and less infiltration. Areas that are flatter, the water moves slower. So you're going to have more time for it to infiltrate. Now, on the right side of your page, there are two blank graphs. I want you to use a pencil, and I want you to try to sketch the two relationships. We'll take a look at it tomorrow, so do it in pencil in case you make any mistakes. Feel free to pause the video. The second factor we're going to look at is the degree of saturation. Okay, now, this one is common sense. Let's say that you have 
an area where the soil is very wet and an area where the soil is dry. If it were to start to rain, which area would let the water infiltrate faster? Okay, well, let's say that you spilled a glass of water. If you want to soak that water up, do you use a wet sponge or do you use a dry sponge? Right, you would use the dry sponge, hopefully. Because if it's dry, it has room inside to hold the water. But if it's already saturated, if it's already very wet, it doesn't have much room to hold the water. So the more saturation there is already, the more runoff you're going to get and the less infiltration there will be. This is why after it rains for several hours, the ground becomes more saturated. That's when we start to get flooding. It's when we start to see puddles forming. And right now, actually, it's, uh, it's August right now as I'm making this. Uh, August 15th, 2016, there's incredible flooding going on in New Orleans. Several people have been died and thousands of people have had to be evacuated uh, because the ground is so saturated and it's raining and raining and raining and none of the water is able to get in and there's all of this crazy flooding. Okay, so that's saturation. That one's really common sense. The third factor we're going to look at is the amount of vegetation okay, or the amount of plants. So again, let's say it were to rain in this dry area and it were to rain in this more humid area with more vegetation. Well, they both have a fairly steep slope. When it's dry, the water is going to run down pretty quickly because there's nothing to stop it. When there are plants, though, the water has to get around all of the grass and get around the bushes and get around the trees the water is going to have to twist and turn to get down and the vegetation is going to make it move slower. So this one goes with the first one that we looked at. If there's more vegetation, what it will do is it's going to intercept the falling precipitation. It's going to block the rain from moving and that's going to slow it down. And if it slows down, you're going to get more infiltration. So the more plants we have, the slower the water will go. And if the water goes slower, you're going to get more of it infiltrating into the soil. So again, sort of common sense. If you stop and think about the water has to get around every blade of grass and every tree and every plant that's there. The water is going to go much slower. The fourth factor. The last one that we're going to look at in this video is land use. Okay, humans, obviously, we do a lot of things to alter the land, to change the earth. And the choices that we make when we build things affect the rate that water can infiltrate. Okay? When we build roads or parking lots or cities and buildings, what we do is we're creating impermeable surfaces. These are surfaces that water cannot get through, right? Water cannot get through a parking lot. So the more that we cover the ground with things, the more runoff we get because we're basically covering the soil. And so the water has nowhere to go. If you've ever been in Manhattan after a big snowstorm, then you have had the fun of jumping over huge puddles of water from the melting snow. Sometimes for weeks after snowfall, every single corner of every block in Manhattan, there are these enormous puddles because there's nowhere else for the water to go. So it runs off. Another way that human land use affects infiltration is that when we cut down forests, right, what's called deforestation, and when we grow crops in farms, what we do is we cause the soil becomes more compacted. It becomes more tight. And so water is less able to get into it. So farming and deforestation create less permeable surfaces. So less water can infiltrate. So you get more flooding. Now, there are several other factors that affect infiltration, and they're really important ones. Uh, I'm not going to talk about them in this video. 
but we will look at some other videos and we'll spend a few periods in class learning about these other factors. Uh, you may have heard of some of them. We have porosity, really important factor. We have permeability, and then there is a process called capillarity, which also affects infiltration. Okay, see you tomorrow.